we act like victims. It's the economy, the market, the place I live, the city, the place I grew up, the school I went to. Everything is somebody else's fault. Because most of the world doesn't care about wanting to fully find the secrets about business and life and entrepreneurship. They want to be entertained. Moral authority is when you walk in the room, everybody listens because you have moral authority. Because you work the hardest in your office. Because you're reading the books. Because you're leading the family. Because you're doing the stuff that you tell other people to do. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, it's Evan. My one word is believe and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I wanna see explode out onto the world. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from fleeing Iran when he was 10 years old during the Iranian revolution to coming to an America, starting the PHP agency and the Valuetainment YouTube channel with the goal to inspire people People to achieve their dreams. He's Patrick Bay David, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume two. Enjoy. All right, let's kick things off with rule number one, stick to the fundamentals. See, when I first got started into business, I was all into listening to all these motivational tapes. Listen, I got a hold of every single one of them and I listened to them over and over and over and over. And I was just so motivated. I wanted to motivate everybody. Motivate, motivate, motivate. motivate. I'm like, you know, it was all, I want to motivate every single person I come across. And then finally got to a point where I said, Pat, one, if you, all you do is motivate somebody, they walk away excited and they don't do anything about it, what are you really motivating people for? For your own self-satisfaction? So people say, oh my gosh, what a great mess message you just gave. You're such an amazing motivational speaker. I cannot believe you speak that way. Then it came to a point where I matured as a person that I no longer needed the attention for people to say, Pat, you're amazing. Don't get me wrong. I love getting recognition from my kids. I love getting recognition from my wife, from my family, from my blood, and from the people I work with on a daily basis. I love that. But to get it for validation, eventually got to a point where I said, I gotta figure out a way to learn the fundamentals of business. And you know what happened? I was disappointed. Let me tell you why I was disappointed. When I seek to find out what are the fundamentals of what these massively successful people that was 22, 23 years old, you know what it was? They master all the boring stuff that none of these motivational speakers talk about on these videos. They don't. You know why? Because who the hell wants to know about boring stuff? What, what video that talks about boring stuff is really going to go viral? It's not going to go viral. Watch this video today. Look how many views it gets. Look, look at the commentary of this video. This is not going to be a great video that's going to go viral. You know why? Because it's boring. You're waiting for a secret. You're waiting for me to give you some massive, special, significant thing that I'm going to tell you that's going to change your life this week. No, no. It's what I, what, what I challenged you to do last week, which is write out your commitments and follow through with it. Can you do that for 60 months? Can you do that for 60 months? You. Can you do it for 60 months? Because I like guarantees in life. And you know what I know about guarantees? If you stick to the basic fundamentals and constantly improve, adjust, adapt, but stick to that same activity over and over and over and over and over again, for 60 straight months, you're bound to dominate your industry. And if you do for 10 years, the industry is gonna know about you. You do it for 20 years, the world's definitely gonna know about you. By the way, nowadays, you don't need 20 years. You need three to five years nowadays, but you do need to show up and do the boring thing every single day. What's the boring thing? Show up on time, early in the morning, leave late, improve, outreach, biz dev, collaborate, sell, communicate, challenge, drive, lead, technology, tracking, accountability. These are boring things you gotta do on a daily basis, but it is what it is. Rule number two, decide to be great. You think rich people are special. You think people who are very wealthy became very wealthy because they are just so much more special than you are. It's one of the biggest misconceptions in the world. They became rich because at some point they said, I think I can do something with my life. I'm sick of it. I figured out certain talents of mine. I don't like this thing. My life sucks. I want changes and they changed. Very simple. You can do that as well. Rule number three, my personal favorite, compress time frames. 
1997 Ferrari 301 went zero to 60 in 8.1 seconds, which today 8.1 seconds is a lifetime. But in 1977, super fast. Then a 1997 Ferrari 456 went zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. Okay, that's almost two and a half seconds faster. Then a Ferrari uh, 2017 488 GTP uh, goes zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds, super fast. Now, if you look at that trend, we went from 814929. So let me ask you, let's go to 2037. What do you think a Ferrari is gonna be doing in 2037? You think it's gonna do zero to 60 in 0.9 seconds? Can you imagine 0.9 seconds? You may say, there's no way in the world. Here's 0.9 seconds, ready, set, go. You just went 60, that's 0.9 seconds. Now someone back at 8.1 said 4.9 is impossible. Someone at 4.9 said 2.9 is impossible. And someone today at 2.9 says 0.9 is impossible. But what's the point with this? This is an entrepreneur channel. What point am I trying to make this? It's a Ferrari endorsement that I'm making? Not at all, this is the point to you. The point is, everything in your business today and the processes that you have, whatever it is, from selling, from point of contact to sales, from receiving the sale to processing the business, to delivering the business, to following up with the client, to hiring, firing, training, whatever process you have that's tied to a timeline. What can you do to compress time frames? Meaning, what can you do to go from doing it in a week to doing it in three days to getting done in the day? What can you do to get it from 24 hours to 12 hours to six hours to three hours? What is it? What areas of your business can you completely compress time frames in today? Take a sheet of paper, make a list, ask, what can I do? to make the process faster. And don't say it's impossible. Then get a committee and ask them to put input. What can we do to make this thing faster? Once you do make it faster, let me put it to you this way. However fast your business is growing today, it's not even close to how fast your business can grow if you figure out ways to compress time frames in every aspect of your business that is tied to a process or a timing. You will be shell-shocked by the results you start getting with your business once you're able to figure out a way to compress time frames. Rule number four, go above and beyond. In a world of business, there are two different types of contacts you'll make. Here's what I mean by it. There's a types of contacts you'll make that'll give you referrals, that'll give you good sale, good opportunity, you'll be given a good referral, maybe you'll make 600 bucks on a sale or $300 or $100 or $500 or $800, and it's cool, it was a good contact you made. Either they're buying from you or they're introducing you to somebody that's gonna buy from you. And then, and then, there are people you're going to meet and make contact with that could completely change the face of your business, change the face of your bank account, the reaction of the banker when you go to deposit a check, because the banker looks at you and does a double take. It's one of these things. Hi, how are you? Great, I'd like to make a deposit. Okay, no problem. Hi, Mr. Jones. It's a different look you get. You know why? Here's the look. The look is a look of a person who is super prepared and they don't wing it anymore. This is what I mean by when I say two different types of contacts. You see, you can wing it with every contact you meet and just kind of treat it and put it in your account and follow up and do all that other stuff. Then you can meet a person that can completely change the life of your business. And that one contact requires you to do more research. You can't wing that contact. You can't copy paste a message and send it on Facebook or LinkedIn and make a mistake and accidentally call somebody Tom that was Mr. Jones, and Mr. Jones was going to be your biggest account, and Mr. Jones is so impressed by you because you actually research what Mr. Jones does, what Mr. Jones likes, what Mr. Jones is interested in, and what rubs Mr. Jones the wrong way. And when you don't pay attention to details like that with contacts that are here, and they have a lot more to offer than 300 of these contacts combined together, you lose. And the reason why you lost is because you try to wing your way to the next level and contacts at this level are not fools. They expect you to know what you're doing. They expect you to put that additional energy into it. They expect you to not wing yourself to the level of doing business with them. They are insulted by your lack of research and your lack of putting effort into it. So this is my challenge to you. This week, whatever you do, ask yourself, am I winging it? Or am I going a little bit above and beyond? Am I winging it just because I'm trying to wing it with my talent? Or I'm trying to really do what a 1% or a 0.1% would do in this game? And every time you catch yourself, 
adjust and ask what would the 0.1 percenter be doing in this same exact situation and whatever it, it is adjust to that rule number five stop acting helpless you'll see a lot of times people will say but but i don't know what to do next I just don't know. I don't know what to do. How, how do I learn how to do this? Who's going to teach me? I don't have a mentor. I don't have money. I don't have this. Look, today we have access to more resources than we've ever had in our lives. How to do anything. Blogs, vlogs, YouTube. There is so much access to resources that we don't need to act helpless. We act like victims, but it's not my fault. She did it. It's my mom. You don't sound my dad. My, 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 my sister was this. My brother was this. My ex, my boss, my... It, it, it's just, it's not my fault. It's the economy, the market, the place I live, the city, the place I grew up, the school I went to. Everything is somebody else's fault. Rule number six, spend time learning. I want you to go on your YouTube channel and forget about if you don't have a YouTube channel. Go on the search button above and click on history and watch the last 20 videos you have watched on YouTube. And this is what I want you to do. Categorize the videos on which ones of them are educational and which ones are entertainment. If 50% or more of the videos are entertainment, you're not really fully committed to wanting to become wealthy. You're more committed to become entertained and it's not going to happen. Go on YouTube and look, the top 1,000 videos, keep going until you find the first video that has to do with a how-to. You know how many videos are ahead? Hundreds if not thousands because most of the world doesn't care about wanting to fully find the secrets about business and life and entrepreneurship. They want to be entertained. This is why Hollywood makes so much money because they know most of the world is fully just committed to en entertainment. That may be you. Go look at your search. By the way, you can go on your history also on your Google and look what websites you visit and what you do with your time that you have. Rule number seven, get feedback. I called unhappy customers, not happy customers. You know why happy customers do business with you. It's an easy call. You're amazing, Patrick. We love you. You're so great. You always do this for us. You always do that for us. I mean, you're just such an amazing person. I'm not learning there. I don't need more people to just keep telling me how amazing I am. I need people to tell me these are the three areas that we could improve in, right? So I call customers that weren't happy. I call clients that weren't happy. I called agents that weren't happy. I called employees that weren't happy. And I said, tell me what happened. And they gave me so much data. You have no idea how much data they gave me. So much data to the point where I got obsessed more with those conversations than the conversations of people that were fully happy. And next thing you know, things kept getting better and better and better. I want you to call three to five unhappy customers and here's what the script sounds like. Hey John, this is Patrick giving you a call. Patrick who? Patrick with David, you and I did business together about a year and a half ago and he decided to go a different direction. Oh hey, uh, what's going on? What, listen, I'm busy, what, what can I help you with? Uh, look John, this is, uh, I'm not calling to sell you. I'm not calling to get you back into the business. I'm not calling you resell you, upsell you, anything like that. I just have one thing, one reason why I'm calling you. I am really obsessed with getting better and you were one of my favorite customers that I lost. And so I just wanted to call you for you to tell me what was it that happened for you to make a decision to go to a different direction? What was it? And there's two things you're looking for. One you're asking, was it me? Was it something I did? Or the second thing you're asking is, was it a part of the product? The part of the product is for you to know what adjustments to make and recommendations to make the next time the part with you is permanent. This is an area where you can figure out a way to improve yourself, your game, and they'll advance you to the next level. Rule number eight, don't be too conservative. Sometimes a smart person comes in and they've already been taught a certain ways or their mind's already been built up in a certain way. They, they are way, way too conservative, way, way too safe. And in the world of business, sometimes it gets ugly. You know, sometimes it gets dirty. Sometimes there are some risks you gotta take. You just gotta take, and it's not conventional risk. It's not conventional thing that I'm supposed to be doing this. No, you can't, you know, there's sometimes that you gotta do some stuff that you can't read in any book or any videos on valuetainment. Literally, there are certain things in business that's like, what do I do in a situation like this? I'm working on a book right now. I'm flying over to uh, New York to talk to a handful of major publishers because they want me to publish this book that has to do with specifically on how to process issues. The, the, once we learn how to process issues, but still if you're too conservative, you're gonna to be tossed in the world of business. There's gonna be times in business that you have to do certain things that no one's gonna think about. But smart people typically just go too 
to uh, by the rule is what they follow. Not laws, not laws, not regulations, rule. It's a different story. They're afraid of breaking rules sometimes, conservative people. Rule number nine, listen to the right people. My parents raised me. A lot of my discipline comes from my father. I love my mom, I love my dad. I bleed Bed David and Bogosian for the rest of my life. But my parents are not entrepreneurs. And they're not gonna be able to convince me how to manage my money, manage my finances. They've never owned a mutual fund. They've never owned a stock. They've never been millionaires. They've never been rich. What can they teach me about becoming successful in my life? By the way, for some of you that are so connected to it, they're like, oh my gosh, that's insulting. It is not insulting. It is not insulting. My kids, let me explain. If my kid wants to be a professional baseball player, okay, if he takes advice from me on baseball, on how to swing the ball when he goes to the next level, there's a problem there. I didn't make it to the major leagues. He needs to listen to his coach. I can be a fan and tell him, hey, this is what A-Rod did, and this is what, you know, Ken Griffey had a beautiful swing, but I'm just a fan. Hit that kid better listen to his batting coach who was in a major league baseball. The same goes with business. Your parents love you. Your mom and dad are great. Believe me, everyone's parents are mostly great. They did their best with you. Not everybody has perfect parents, but most people are pretty good parents. They're not gonna teach you how to become millionaires, unless if they did. If they did, take their counsel. If they didn't, scratch their philosophies for business, go learn from somebody that made it. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips, get moral authority. Moral authority, one more time, moral authority. What do I mean by moral authority? This is what I'm talking about. Moral authority is when you walk in the room, everybody listens, because you have moral authority. Because you work the hardest in your office, because you're reading the books, because you're leading the family, because you're doing the stuff that you tell other people to do. That's moral authority. Moral authority is why people listen to what you got to say. There's a lot of people that want to be heard on social media. Hey, I'm going to go out there and be a sales trainer. I'm going to go out there and be a motivational speaker. I'm going to go out there and kill it on Instagram, all these other things. But you need moral authority. There's only so far you can go without having moral authority. Moral authority happens when you're going out to doing your part. Win in business, you go sell first, you go show up first, you go finish the book first, you go improve yourself first, you go change first, you go lead first, you go do the work first, you become better in collaborations, you become better with people, you go do it first. Then everybody follows because when you do focus on moral authority, 2018 will not only be an incredible year, by 2019, you no longer have to focus on moral authority because it becomes part of your DNA. And word spreads, which means anybody who does business with you, you get other people with moral authority that wanna do business with you, which is higher quality people. Believe me, those are the types of people you want on your team. So my challenge to you, two words, go get a moral authority. Now I've got two very special Patrick B. David bonus clips around being a good team leader and playing smart. But before that, commitment of the day. You just watched all of this great content. You absorbed a ton of wisdom. What are you going to do now? What are you going to change in your business or in your life as a result of all of Patrick's wisdom? Leave it down in the comments below. I want to see what you're committing to changing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon, and enjoy the bonus clips. Your team building, how are you gonna put a team together? How good of a recruit are you gonna be? How good are you at bringing solid talent, operations, systems, sales, technology, compliance, how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna do that? Team building, you will face that challenge where you're gonna realize you can't do it all, and it'll come down to how well you build a team. When you think about risk taking, everybody falls somewhere in this category of risk taking, right? You got somebody that is so conservative, they will never do anything with their money, ever invest. You can't even convince them to put in the bank because they don't even trust the bank because they believe Armageddon is around the corner. You know any people like that? Typically it's our grandparents and they're so afraid because of a lot of bad things that happen. Then you have people that are conservative. I believe in bonds. I believe in having some conservative balanced funds. I believe in this, I believe in that. Everything is just somewhat conservative. Then you have people that are assertive. They do research, they study. Let me look into this Bitcoin thing. What is blockchain? What is cryptocurrency? What is this insurance policy? What is the stock? What is this doing? How's real estate? This guy told me about investing to Austin. Should let me look into Austin. Let me look into Nashville. Let me
me look into this community, Victorville, they're talking about California, that maybe it's becoming bigger because it's getting closer to Vegas. Should I consider putting my money in there or maybe Palmdale? Well, let me look at this stuff. But they're assertive. I'm learning. I'm trying to learn. Then you have the guys that are aggressive. You know, I'm gonna go for this, and I'm gonna go for this, and I'm gonna go for this, and I'm gonna go for this. These guys, they could have a big hit. Absolutely, they could have a big hit, but they can have a big loss as well. And last but not least, this is just absolutely dumb category. This is, this is the people that, this is the people that actually believe they can fly. You know, this is, this is like, what was that one song, Mario, uh, uh, by uh, 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 R. Kelly? Remember R. Kelly? Yeah. R. Kelly had a song, and it went something like this. By the way, this is, this is how he would sing if he was singing to these types of people when they invest. This is what it would sound like. He would say, he believes he can fly. He believes he can touch the sky. He thinks about it every night and day. He spreads his wings and crashes away. Because that's what happens to these guys. In 2009, when the market crashed, here's what took place. Ford stock went roughly to a dollar. Matter of fact, it was under a dollar. Imagine if you could buy that stock on that day if you had some cash sitting aside. What if you could buy? Think about if you could buy 10,000 shares at a buck, that's 10,000 bucks. Nine years later, you would have $110,000. $110,000, okay? Citigroup went down to nine bucks. $74 today. Disney went down to 13. I'm wearing a Disney shirt. Went down to 13. Today, $103, give or take. B of A went down to 250. $32 today. That's 12X, 13X. Amazon was 34. Today it's 1500. Now that's an anomaly. That's a different story. Nike was 12. Today's 66. I'm showing you these things because this is not a 6% return. The 6% return means it takes 12 years for your money to double. We're not talking about that kind of stuff. But this happens if you anticipate a recession's about to come up. So having said that, let me show you some companies, that, companies here that have the most cash. Take a look at this. Walmart's got eight billion in cash today. Procter & Gamble, 15 billion. Pepsi, 17. Amazon, 30. Coca-Cola, 27. GE, 44. Alphabet, which is Google, 95. Microsoft, 133. Apple, $261 billion of cash is what they're sitting on. By the way, this is from a Business Insider article, which was December of 2017. Apple today, give or take, they're at $285 billion today. And by the way, I'm not even talking about the off offshore dollars that they find out how much some of these companies are sitting on. I'm talking money in America that they have to report because they're public companies, public to traded companies, right? And by the way, something for you to be thinking about. Walmart, look at this number. This is such an interesting data. It's a completely different topic, but watch this here. Walmart has $8 billion in cash. They did $485 billion in top line revenue last year. That's more than Apple and Amazon combined on their top line revenue. But they only have eight billion in cash. Amazon has four times more cash than Walmart. Why? Because Walmart's retail. Walmart's retail. This is why Walmart is so worried about Amazon. Walmart needs 2.3 million employees to function. Amazon only needs 341,000, and Apple only needs 123,000, and they got $285 billion in cash. The question becomes this. For all these people that say you shouldn't have a lot of cash, do you think the people in the boardroom of Apple that say, man, let's have a lot of cash, you think they're dumb? You think Amazon Jeff Bezos is dumb? You think Tim Cook is dumb? You think people who run Microsoft are dumb? You think Bill Gates? You think you know, Google guys, Sergey, and all these guys? You think they're not that smart? You better believe they're very smart. Now, why are they stashing so much cash away today? Probably because they're anticipating a recession to come up. And when this recession comes up, they're hoping a recession comes up because when the recession comes up, some of the companies that make bad mistakes, they can pick them up on 40 cents on a dollar, 20 cents on a dollar, and that's how they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger because they have cash. So what does this mean to you? Look, let's go back over here, Mario. Come back with me over here. On this, on this risk factor here, I want you to know, Mario, I'm gonna go back and come back. I'm, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want you to think I am telling you to be here. By the way, if you do wanna be extremely wealthy one day, if you do wanna be possibly a decamillionaire, a hundred, maybe even the, even the B word, you do need to be kind of here, you do. You have to take some risk that maybe have a very big risk. But at the same time, I'm not a fan of people who recommend saying, 
only keep 5% and out of your million dollars, 50 of it keep cash, everything else put in invested, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Here's what I'm not a fan of, Mari, come back with me over here. Here's what I'm not a fan of. If, based on what I showed you, this is not a myth, I'm not selling you this, this is facts. This is 33 recessions since 1854, it's a fact. One every five years is a fact. 2008, 2009, 0190, how long they last? These are facts, these are not myths, these are not ideas, these are not, well, could have hypoth, these are purely facts. If you look at this, you be the judge of it based on where you're at on that risk side. When do you think a recession is gonna take place? You're gonna say 2025? Because in your mind you wanted to go for another seven years where the market keeps going up? Or are you thinking back there saying, hmm, I think something's about to happen. And let's just say something's about to happen, great. Don't get scared about it. You see, rich people are not scared about it. The people that I'm talking about, they're not scared about it. They're excited about it. They're ecstatic about it. They're sitting around saying, oh my gosh, this thing's been going and delaying for eight, nine years. The longer it delays, the worse it could be. Now this is not me projecting and saying, I can't wait for another one to happen. Believe me, I've been going 11 top line revenues quarter as a company and we're doing very, very good. I'm gonna be also be affected by this. But the message I'm giving to you is, realize cash is still king. This is not in the past. It is still king. Keep your cash. Don't get too aggressive. Don't get too crazy. Don't go to the dumb side. Don't listen to the R. Kelly song thinking you can fly. You can't fly. Nobody can fly. But sit there and strategize yourself to say, oh my gosh, in the next year, two years, three years, five years, something could happen and when it does, oh my goodness, I'm going to capitalize. Look, somebody said, well Pat, isn't this kind of deceptive? I hope everybody watches this video, but they won't. You know why? Because cat videos do better. Because somebody sliding and hitting their back and other people laughing at them, it just does better. Because big butts do better. Because six pack just does better on videos. Because pranks do better. Jokes do better than a video. This is boring, this is money, and then people wonder why so few people are wealthy. This isn't something new I'm telling you. This is not something new I'm telling you. Berkshire Hathaway knows this. They buy things on sale. They know this stuff. Very, very wealthy, successful investors fully embrace this concept. The question is, are you gonna embrace the concept? Are you still gonna be way too optimistic about the fact that everything's gonna work out? Because if this is right, in the last seven years, the longest time we've gone without a recession has been 10 years, and it's only happened one time. And we're at nine years right now, since our last recession. So we got one more year until recession comes. Are you ready for it? So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word, this is all you need to be happy. It's the most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. Hey Believe Nation, if you want to know what the most important one word is for Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Oprah Winfrey, Will I Am, and Howard Schultz, I have a very special secret video for you. Check the description for details.